For my third trip to Uganda, I flew from Addis Ababa in Ethiopia to Entebbe in Uganda, where I based myself for 10 days, filming the wildlife in my hotel gardens and in the Entebbe Botanical Gardens. Here I am outside my dormitory in Entebbe Backpackers. The large old trees behind me were often full of birds. These grey plantain eaters were almost constantly present and their crazy calls are one of my favourite sounds in Africa. Every morning, between about 10 and 11, a pair of spectacular black-headed gonolics visited the lime tree next to my room. This is quite a common garden bird in Africa. Something I hadn't expected to see was Ross's Turaco, a bird that usually occurs in old forests, but is also found in mature gardens with large trees. This family of birds is restricted to Africa. By contrast, the grey mouse bird is common in gardens all over Africa. A small white flowered shrub near my room was very popular with butterflies, including this female diadem. Although she is perfectly palatable and would make a perfectly acceptable meal for a chameleon or a bird, they leave her alone. Why? Well, because she mimics the extremely unpalatable and quite poisonous African monarch. I didn't manage to capture a monarch on film during my stay in Uganda. So this picture in my book 500 Butterflies will have to do. This butterfly can be so poisonous that a young African girl was once reported to have died after eating one. If you were a bird, could you tell these two apart? The sweetly perfumed flowers also attracted this beautiful day-flying hawk moth. As you can see, while feeding, it hovers very like a hummingbird. Although my hotel garden was interesting, the botanical gardens were much larger and much richer in wildlife. The Hadada ibis was always present, probing the ground with its long beak looking for food. The botanical gardens lie right on the shore of Lake Victoria, Africa's biggest lake. This is a pied kingfisher. Not surprisingly, beside the lake there were thousands of dragonflies. This is a female, the male is blue. The vervet monkey was common in the gardens, as it is over much of Africa, often living quite happily quite close to humans. Unlike many monkeys, it can have its babies at any time of the year, so youngsters are always present. This baby is probably only a few days old.
It's just beginning to explore its surroundings. And like all young monkeys, it's playful, even from a very young age. By far the most splendid bird in the gardens, and in fact one of the most magnificent birds in the whole of Africa, is the great blue turaco. Later on I was to see these in my hotel garden. Along the treeless lakeshore, the butterflies are all species typical of open places. This is a blue pansy. The little commodore is in the same family as the blue pansy. But the common dotted border is in the family of whites and sulphurs. One of the most puzzling aspects of African butterflies is the large number of black and white species. These look confusingly similar but also confusingly different. These together form a mimicry complex containing unpalatable species, the models, and palatable species, the mimics. This is one of the core species, the unpalatable friar, which forms a model for many other mimics. The Lycara legionnaire is another model in a family of wholly unpalatable species. This day-flying moth also appears to be part of the complex. The variable egg fly is one of the palatable mimics. Here we have a male hovering over a female and dusting her with scales from his wings, so-called love dust. This contains pheromones designed to stimulate her to mate, but in this case completely unsuccessful, as normally happens. The female of the mocha swallowtail is another palatable mimic. As with most swallowtails, she flutters her wings while feeding. By contrast, the male mocha swallowtail looks like a completely different species. He has tails for a start, as in a typical swallow tail. He will chase any black and white butterfly in the hope that it will turn out to be a female. Another form of the mocha swallowtail female is not black and white, but has brown on her wings. She appears to be part of a mimicry complex involving legionnaires with brown on their wings such as this black spot legionnaire. A third mimicry complex involves the unpalatable African blue tiger. Which is mimicked by the palatable vein swallowtail. As with the mocha swallowtail, the female of the diadem, which you've seen before, is quite different from the male. 
It looks like a completely different species, as seen here. Most of the small day-flying moths also had bright colours, known as warning coloration, advertising the fact that they're bad to eat. Listen for the great blue turaco going ga 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 in the distance. No matter where I was filming in the gardens, there were usually black kites in the trees nearby. As with any bird of prey, it's constantly on the lookout for a meal. After 10 days in Entebbe, I travelled to Fort Portal to visit the nearby Lake Uncaruba.